when he goes crooked, bump his head. I'm gonna yield his butt here. In his backing, he did need me to whack him on the legs a couple of times with the stick because again, he wasn't putting enough energy into it. He was being a little lazy there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you ruin a perfectly good horse. Hey, bitch, and welcome back to another Let's Judge Horse Trainers video. Hmm. I had to take some, you know, Zen pills before filming this and I meditated quite a few times because today's Let's Judge Horse Trainers video is going to be my least favorite one. And you know what? This is going to be probably one of the only videos I make where I'm slightly biased, heavily biased, I would say, because I have a lot of experience already reacting to this trainer, but I wanted to include him in my Let's Judge Horse Trainers videos so I can really dissect his videos and show you exactly why I dislike him and his training and why he's wrong. So today we're going to be judging Clinton Anderson. I'm going to yield his butt here. But before we get into today's video, I want to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, which is Animal Nutrition Calculator. I love Animal Nutrition Calculator, you guys. They are here to make nutrition easy and accessible for absolutely everybody. They even have free horse base calculators and dog base calculators as well as cat. So that way, if you have a horse, dog, or cat, you can get a basic understanding for your animal's nutrition for free. Also, they're coming out with dog premium calculators that are tailored to specific dog needs and requirements, as well as cat and many other animals, they currently have all of their horse premiums available right now. The premium calculators are essentially tailored to more specific nutritional needs or requirements for your horses, and they're so easy to use, you guys. They're just $2.99 and it takes maybe a minute of your life to be able to fully understand your animal's nutritional needs and requirements. The forage calculator is by far my favorite one for the horses. As you guys know, if you follow me on Patreon or members, I've been using the forage calculator for Link and Braley because Braley's actually on a little bit of a weight loss journey and it calculates all the nutritional value within the specific type of food you're feeding as well as the specific concentrates and it's all based on a healthy 95% five, five, forage to concentrates ratio. And it just is so much easier than sitting down and reading pages and pages of veterinary nutrition books. Animal Nutrition Calculator is only here to help you understand your animal's specific needs based on whatever you feed them. So definitely check them out. Like I said, all those premium calculators for horse are available now and they're just amazing. Highly recommend. It's been helping me so much with my horses. All of your animal's health and happiness starts from within and it starts with good nutrition. So feed them appropriately. Thank you again to Animal Nutrition Calculator for sponsoring me. Definitely check them out, you guys. That's gonna be the first link down below, but let's get to it. And say, hey, come on, give me that 100%. He just hit him in the face. Did anybody just see that? <laughs> I have been telling people for years, like at least five or six years now, that Clinton Anderson is a very bad person and a bad trainer. Now, obviously that's just my opinion. People can draw their own opinions. All of his videos are terrible. You could literally click on any of his videos and they're all bad. All he does is flooding and he's very abusive. He's very physical with horses and it's not just physical discipline. It turns into physical abuse. He's the type of person that tries to confuse horses to make it look like the horse is misbehaving. So therefore it gives him an excuse to be very aggressive and get those really insane thumbnails. He basically just overhypes situations and puts horses that are otherwise good horses into bad situations to make it look like the horse has no training and is really bad. And again, flooding horses is not training. It's just overwhelming them to get them to do what you want them to do. But what's hilarious is recently there was a very old clip from a video that resurfaced of him just abusing a blind horse in training. So that's the video that I want to react to for today's Let's Judge Horse Trainers video because this is a video that he stands by. This video is still up on his channel and hilariously he removed all the comments, which to be honest, he does that on a lot of his videos because I think as time goes on, 
people are starting to catch on to the fact that he's very abusive, which is crazy because he's amassed well over 200,000 followers at this point on YouTube. I don't know why. I don't know why. He's terrible. They thought he had some kind of problem with his eyes. So we had the vet check him after I got him. Most of the time when I've seen cataracts in horses, they're traumatic in nature. The vet said that he had congenital cataracts in both eyes and he had minimal vision. It's really not that uncommon to see a blind horse. However, what is unusual is to find somebody that's truly dedicated to that horse to give it a second chance. It was really difficult at first. He would just kind of jump when you touched him because he didn't know that you were there. I try to use a lot of voice commands. A lot of people would have given up long ago with him and just kind of written him off as just a sad sack case, but she's done wonderful things with him. He's a really just a neat horse. I really just, I really just hate the fact that people try to hype themselves up. Yeah, we didn't give up on this horse, and a lot of people would have given up on him because he's really just a piece of shit. There's plenty of people who I know who own and ride horses that only have one eye, have no eyes, or are semi-blind. I don't understand why people think it's that big of a deal and why they're hyping it up for this video. It's not that big of a deal if your horse is partially blind, you guys. You can still do stuff with them. They're not disabled. I don't know. I'm just a sucker for lost causes. Today, He's not a lost cause. Why would you say that? Dude, automatically, I'm sorry, I don't like these people. Like, this horse is not a lost cause. Blind horses are just normal horses, too. We're meeting a girl with a dream and a horse with a big heart. The breeders had told us that they thought he had some kind of problem with his eyes, so they knew ahead of time that there might be something wrong with him. Some say love is blind. Basically, a cataract is an opacity of the lens. Light can get through, but it doesn't allow for vision or sight. Some say it enables one to see things others fail to see. I was drawn to him because he was a paint and I'm a big paint fan. I, I had two others and then when they told me that there was probably something wrong with him, I don't know, I'm just a sucker for lost causes and so that kind of drew me in. Don't buy horses based off their looks. I can't tell people how many times I've seen I've seen individuals buy horses based off how they look. I mean, it's just stupid. Buy a horse based off of their breeding, based off of their confirmation, their health, their performance. I've seen some of the prettiest horses in the world that are some of the biggest nightmares to deal with. Just don't do it. To Chrissy Long, both interpretations of love are correct. For it is love that has inspired her vision for her blind horse. Gabriel. Gabe first came to the farm in June of 2009. He was born on the breeding farm where he was bred and they didn't really do anything with him. They turned him out in the field with the other horses and he got really afraid and didn't know where he was and he ran into barbed wire fences and got really torn up. And then I found him and felt really bad for him so I wanted to do something for him. When I found him, he was really spooky and he didn't like people at all. When I saw him for Shots and Coggins, he was just very, very flighty. So just did our best to try and soothe him and didn't have to lay my hands on him really to look at his eyes. He took a look at him and he told us right away what it was. Easy to see when you get, looks like a big old ice cube floating in the middle of the eye. It can only be a, a couple things. The vet said that he had congenital cataracts in both eyes. Most of the time when I've seen cataracts in horses, they're traumatic in nature or uh, some sort of injury and not in both eyes, not bilateral. Uh, in his case, it was the entire lens. I mean, it looked like a big fat ice cube floating in the eye and there was nothing. I hate this editing. One of my biggest pet peeves with Clinton, which I know he's watching this right now, is your editor, dude, stop. Your editor is way too over the top and dramatic. Oh, oh my God, the horse was blind. What am I gonna do? Stop. Okay, it's totally unnecessary. This is insanely stupid. This is not that big of a deal. Not blind to her paint shortcomings, Chrissy knew she needed help. In the beginning, the other horses really picked on him, I guess, because they knew something was the matter with him and he couldn't really defend himself. So what I had to do was I got my older horse, Zeus, and he would follow Zeus around, and that's how I'd get him from place to place to start off with, because I couldn't really get my hands on him. The first time I ever threw a rope over his back to desensitize him, he got loose from me <laughs> and ran across the field, and I couldn't catch him for a while. 
Clinton's method helped me a lot because I learned how to approach and retreat and just get him used to people. Slowly, surely, Gabriel began to respond to Chrissy's consistent effort. I'm really impressed with anybody that's got determination and drive, especially a young person. And she really did with this horse. She never gave up on the horse. She kept trying every day. With a sighted horse, when you ask them to lunge, they go off a lot of your uh, body language. But with Gabriel, because he couldn't see in the beginning, I'd ask him like I was supposed to, but then I'd use my voice to tell him to go, and then I'd tell him with a stick. So he kind of caught on to going right off the feel of the halter, not necessarily like my arm in the air. He got to where he went from being totally spooky and reactive to a dead quiet, you know, lazy horse. It was just basically following the method that helped me get him to where he is now, where I can like stand on his back and all that kind of thing. Okay, I want to point out, none of this stuff is original to Clinton Anderson, and he's actually pretty notorious for taking other people's training methods and pretending like they're his. A lot of this stuff, plenty of other trainers do, and plenty of other trainers did way before him. I'm very curious to see why this girl is even here working with him, because she seems to be doing fine, and this horse seems like a perfectly normal horse with almost zero problems, except for the fact that he has a little bit of difficulty seeing. How much do you want to bet, as soon as Clinton Anderson comes in the video, he's going to start doing shit that's going to make this horse act up for views, to make it look like the horse is bad, and then pretend later on that he solved the problem by just treating the horse better when the horse was fine to begin with because this girl's doing perfectly fine with him. He still has cataracts, but they're much more focal in nature. And he now has what is called a menace, which is the reaction to blink or shy when something looks like it's coming at your eye. It's a reflex. He never had that before when I first met him. So looks like we got a little lucky. It's a real testament to her sort of dedication and persistence. She's done wonderful things with him. He's a really just a neat horse. Watching Gabriel's progress on Clinton Anderson's method really showed me that it does work because he went from not being able to touch him at all to being able to ride him and do everything with him like a regular sighted horse. Most people would have given up on her horse. Most people would have thrown that horse out into the pasture and forgot about it. But she had guts, determination, talent, and drive. And when you add all of that up, she got amazing results with the horse mate. That's what we're going to see today. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> A billion years later, we're finally getting to the freaking video. How long does your intro need to be? Is this another intro? How many intros are there? Well, today, I'm gonna meet somebody that I guarantee Gordon McKinley would have been proud of. At Infinity Farm, I feed the horses in the morning and clean stalls and just do the regular day-to-day -day chores. And then I also train horses for other people, and I teach riding lessons. Gordon always used to tell me, he said, Clinton, success is just around the corner, but most people quit far too early. You gotta have that determination. Well, this girl today did exactly that. So I couldn't wait to meet Gabriel and Chrissy to see him in action. So how long have you been practicing the down on a horsemanship method? For two years. For two years now. Now, have you been doing the fundamentals or the groundwork or riding? What have you been doing with um, it? Both. I've been, we're through the fundamentals and now we're working on the intermediate. Okay. Is there any part of the method that you feel like that you'd like more help in or that you're not quite as proficient as you'd like to be? Um, he's a little bit slow at the backing. Right. So I'd, I think I'd need a little bit of help with that. Okay. We can arrange that. So you're a great trainer and all, but what can I do so I can look like like, I'm better than you. Jesus Christ. Well, let's get started then. Why don't you show me how you flex him? Put your stick on the ground and uh, show me how you flex him and I'll kind of watch you and see if there's any pointers that I can give you. Very good. Excellent. Right, uh, go ahead and do it on the other side, mate. So far, this horse looks really good. He's getting off the halter, he's being soft and supple. Very good, okay, give me a lead rope and let me give you a couple little pointers here. You're doing a really good job overall, but what I'd like to see you do is try to pick up with just your fingertips. Try to be a little bit lighter 
and then if he doesn't get off it, go ahead and bump him off. That was so much more aggressive than what she was doing. I love how he takes something that's really subtle and makes it aggressive for like no reason at all. Try to be a little bit lighter, and then if he doesn't get off it, go ahead and she was doing perfectly fine, and he's like, but let me, but, but let me get in there. You're having a tendency to grab with your hand, okay? See how light you can be with just your fingertips. There. I was picking up a little too hard with Gabriel using my whole hand. See how light you can be with your fingertips. Meanwhile, Clinton Anderson's over there grabbing and yanking the horse's freaking face sideways. So far, he looks really good. Is he pulling his head away too fast? No, no, I love that. See how he left his head there and he brought it back? That's even better yes. again. Okay, so if I had to grade you on that, I'd give you a good solid A, borderline A+. Plus. Why don't you show me yielding his hindquarters, stage one. Now, you've been clucking because he couldn't see you that well? Yes, and also he goes a lot off just the feel of the halter. Like, I sometimes I don't even need to use the stick. I yeah. just do it to stay in good practice yeah. for when yeah. I work with other horses. But yeah. he's pretty good about just going off the feel of the well, halter. Well, probably when he was uh, when he was uh, having trouble seeing, he had to rely on the feel more than the look. The method works really well for horses that are blind because it relies on the pressure and release system. You apply pressure, and when the horse does what you want, you release that pressure. So the horses catch on very quickly to what you want him to do. Most of the time, if I cluck, he knows it's time to start. Yeah, and, if and he there's gets nothing lazy... wrong with that, and using a little cluck, and especially yeah. in his case. Typically, I wouldn't cluck, but in his case, it will certainly help you. I love how Clinton Anderson is so against vocalization and vocal training. And it's literally just because he is so physical with horses, which turns into physical abuse. Why don't you go ahead and show me lunging for respect stage one. Okay, go ahead and let your string out if you need to. Try not to move such a big circle. Point, cluck and spank, make him speed up. Now go ahead and yield his hindquarters. And send him the other way. Of course, when a horse is blind, he can't really see your body language. So there was other things that she had to do, use some verbal cues and use the pressure of the halter and stick to adapt to the fact that the horse could not see the handle. You can also do that with horses that are not blind. Again, I don't understand why he's so against being vocal. So what kind of cue were you giving him to yield his hindquarters if you couldn't see you? Most of the time I just kissed to him. You just kissed her? I'll try to cluck to him when I ask him to go faster and kiss when I'm wanting him to yield his hindquarters. Okay, that's a good idea. Speed him up there a little bit. Point cluck, spank him on the butt there. Come on, speed him up. There you go. Wait, so she said she uses kissing to yield him, but then when he said speed him up, she started kissing to him. So very confusing vocalizations there. He's got a little bit of a kind of attitude there that he needs sped up there, okay? Speed him up again. There. Come on, spank his butt. That's the girl. Get that energy. Why does he always, in all of his videos, wants people to be physically abusive with their animals? He's like, come on, spank his butt. Why? He's doing exactly what the girl is asking him for. And you can see the girl's like uncomfortable. She likes her horse. She doesn't want to do that to him. He's doing everything that she asks. He's just way over the top aggressive. And the fact that people still defend him is unbelievable. He just wants to be aggressive to horses for no reason. Get those feet moving now, okay? He might be blind, he's not dumb. Horses are just like kids. If they think they can be a little lazy and not put in a lot of effort, they won't at times. He got a spank on the butt a few times because when she said leave, he was lazy, he was lethargic, he didn't want to put in the effort. So she walloped his butt a couple of times and he really started taking a serious thing. He was taking it seriously from the very beginning. You are just pressuring this girl into hitting her horse because you want drama for the camera to make it look like you're doing something. Again, this horse is perfectly fine. He's doing everything she's asking for. There's no reason for her to be whipping him and hitting him physically. That's better. See, now he's not shaking his head and pinning his ears back at you. Oh my God, again with the pinning of the ears. At what point was that horse pinning his ears towards her? I think I pointed it out in a couple of his videos that I've reacted to that Clinton likes to tell his audience as a way to justify him physically beating horses that the horses were pinning their ears. Did you guys see that horse pin his ears once? No, you didn't because Clinton Anderson is delusional. And again, he's just justifying physical abuse. 
You know, I really like how she's adapted some of her cues. Like, because he couldn't see her, she'd use kissing as his cue to give her two eyes and clucking to speed up. That's really good. That's called using your imagination, you know, adapting to the situation. Gabriel responded really well when we upped the pressure. I wasn't expecting him to do as good as he did. I thought he was already putting in a pretty good effort, so it really surprised me when he did so well with it and really took it up a notch. I wasn't expecting that at all. See, so she just said that she figured her horse was already doing really good, so she didn't know why she had to up it and increase the pressure. Girl, you didn't, okay? You're not crazy. Um, he just made you do that for literally no reason. Energetic feet means an energetic mind. This little horse did a lot better once we kind of moved him on. We had to spank him on the butt a few times and get him moving. He was doing fine was the whole time. After today is Clinton saying he's blind, not dumb. And so I kind of baby him a lot because he might have an impairment, but I really shouldn't. Girl, no, stop. How horrible is this? He's literally making her second guess her own training with her own horse. She was doing completely fine without him. You're not babying your horse. He's just abusive. And he believes that all horses should be beat to death, okay? Obviously, I'm exaggerating, but you get my point. He's so over the top with every horse he works with, which is why all of the horses end up with problems. I know so many people who used his methods or went to his clinics that end up with horses that have serious issues. So you cluck into him a little bit? Yes, I cluck to get him to start. And then he just kind of knows that until I start rubbing him, he can, has to keep going. Ah, okay. Right in it. It's a little lazy there, don't be fighting the bump on it. He can feel that, remember? So you might not be able to see real good, but he can feel you. There you go, now rub him to a stop. So how I would brighten that up a little bit if he's a little lazy there is I would cluck and then tap him. Okay. Tap him. And when he hears that cluck, he's gonna brighten up just a little bit. Okay. Let's try that again. Whack. See, so cluck again. Whack. Rub harder. Cluck. Whack! With some repetition, if your horse has half the brain, he'll figure out when you cluck to him, he better move those feet. But if you cluck and you don't see that horse's feet dramatically speed up, you have to do something about it. Remember, make the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. Oh my God, this is so much worse than what I thought it was gonna be. He's literally encouraging her to hit her horse because her horse is doing what she's asking for. I mean, guys, this horse is literally blind. He was already doing what she was asking for. And if you notice, he doesn't move any faster. Once she starts smacking him, he still is moving at the same pace as what he was beforehand. You're not accomplishing anything. That's probably the fastest that that horse can move around. Horses are big animals. There's only so fast they can do that. It's ridiculous that he's teaching her to just like hit her horse. It's insane. Why don't you go ahead and show me your backing? I was having some real trouble with the backing exercises, so I was hoping Clinton would be able to help me with that because I just couldn't quite seem to get it right. And he backs crooked. <laughs> when we would ask him to back up, he would back up crooked or not put in a lot of energy, and I wasn't being firm enough with him to try and get him to take me more seriously. Let me have a little go of him here. What I would do to him is use the clocking sensation, okay, and then if he doesn't speed up, I'm gonna whack him on his chest. So because he can't see real well, I'm gonna wiggle, wave, and then retreat. So that's not pressure and release. I want to point that out to everybody. He's giving pressure to the horse and the horse is doing what he's asking. The horse is backing away just with the wiggle of the rope. You can see he starts wiggling the rope. The horse backs up. What does he do? Instead of releasing pressure, like what he should do, like what he claims that his training is, he hits the horse for no reason. For no reason, the horse is already backing up. How do people even justify this type of training? This is literally just abuse. This is a guy who just wants to beat horses. I'm gonna wiggle. And whack him. There. Now that time, I didn't whack him because I felt like he put some effort into his feet. I think Gabriel probably wishes that Clinton hadn't come up with this program because he just wants to sit and be lazy and not doing anything. No, your horse is not lazy. He literally was doing everything you were asking him to do. Don't second guess yourself because this guy comes along and tells you that you're bad at training and look at me, 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 me. His expression when Clinton was working with him, it was totally different than when I work with him.
Yeah, because now he's actually being abused. <laughs> when he goes crooked, bump his head. I'm gonna yield his butt here. In his backing, he did need me to whack him on the legs a couple of times with the stick because, again, he wasn't putting enough energy into it. He was being a little lazy there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you ruin a perfectly good horse. There was literally no reason for him to do that at all. He didn't ask the horse for anything at all. He just chose to walk around back and smack him for no reason at all. And he just did that to get a feisty thumbnail or get a section of a video that would be dramatic, which is why they're about to put dramatic music over it. He knows better. So I corrected him and say, hey, come on, give me that 100%. He just hit him in the face. Did anybody just see that? Try, he was only giving me 60% and that horse is capable of 100%. Oh, I like that. There. That's 100% better. There. So what do you think was the biggest difference between what I was doing and what you did? Abuse. <laughs> Abuse. I went way too easy on him and didn't expect enough out of him. No, you were not going easy on him. You were treating him like a respected member of your family, which is how horses deserve to be treated. That doesn't mean that you're coddling them just because you treat them with respect and kindness. Oh man, this is just so depressing. I mean, obviously you already know I hate him. He's just an animal abuser in my opinion, but the fact that this girl was perfectly fine and doing perfectly fine with her horse, and then he comes along and just tells her that she just needs to abuse and beat the horse and and she's second guessing all the training she's put in is beyond ridiculous. This is the most insane video I've ever seen posted to the internet by a trainer. He is the biggest piece of crap I've ever seen on the internet. And I just cannot believe that people follow his method. Quite frankly, it's unbelievable to me. I really can't believe that someone like Clinton Anderson has such a big following because he seriously is the least deserving trainer I've ever seen on the internet. <sighs> anyway, so F all around, you know, you knew that that was going to come. You knew it was going to happen. But anyway, yeah, that's why I dislike Clinton Anderson and that's why... I don't want people to follow him and why I would never recommend his videos. So wanted to get this Let's Judge horse trainers out of the way because a lot of people wanted me to make it and put my reasonings behind it. Like I said, he's just terrible all around. His training method is largely unoriginal and most of it is just flooding. And he also creates situations for views and uses every excuse in the book to beat horses or bully them. And he's just not that good. So thank you anyway for watching you guys and a massive thank Thank you again to Animal Nutrition Calculator for sponsoring today's video. They're absolutely amazing. Don't forget to check those out. It's going to be free if you want to use the base or $2.99 for any of the premiums. So incredibly affordable. First link in the description. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.